Hey everybody, welcome back to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron. Um, it's a new day and we got a new project. But for all of you that watch my channel regularly, I came in this morning and got a little bit done on Rum Runner. Got the fuel tank cleaned out, put back together, got it put back in. I got sway bar end links and shocks put on. And I made this little block off plate for where the wiring harness from the computer used to come through. So nothing major. Just little stuff. Got the shop cleaned up a little bit because today I have a very special project. And this build means more to me probably than any other one that I've done because it's for my baby girl. So my youngest daughter turns two June 4th and daddy's gonna make her a little present. So here it is. This is a 60s metal pedal car. And my little girl loves daddy's truck and loves to watch racing videos with me and go vroom vroom and all that stuff. So I'm gonna give her her own little car. Uh, I think she'll like it. If not, it'll be a cool decor in the house, but I'm pretty sure she's gonna like it. So what we're gonna do is I've kind of checked it out mechanically. It's pretty well mechanically sound, except for the steering wheel needs a little repair. And the front tires are a little bit loose, but they always are on these. So I'm gonna try to tighten them up a little bit if I can. If I can't, then it'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna disassemble part of it. I wanna take the windshield frame off. I wanna take the hood ornament off. I wanna pull these rusty chrome hubcaps off. Probably gonna to have to do that anyways to try to tighten the wheels up. But it looks like that's just about everything that will unbolt. This thing's had a pretty rough life. Obviously, it's something kids play with. But um, I want to make it nice. I'm going to sand it all down. I'm going to repaint it. Um, somebody at one time... I don't know if I can get a right angle where you guys can see it, but at one time this thing had a flame job on it. There you go, you can kind of see right there. This thing had a flame job on it. I'm not sure what color it was, but somebody took this like antique white and just kind of hosed it on there. Probably to make it look better for selling purposes or whatever the case may be. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. They just hosed it down. So I'm going to take off the pieces that will come off and I want to try to sand down as far as I can at least to get that pinstriping off of there and smooth everything out. And then we're going to put a cool paint job on this thing. We're going to make a seat for this thing. I'm going to fix all the little things that are wrong with it. And I hope you guys enjoy watching it as much as I know I'm going to enjoy doing it. So I'm going to grab some tools. We'll start pulling some stuff apart. All right. I'm gonna get started pulling pieces off. Hopefully everything comes apart pretty easy without breaking. If anything breaks, I know a guy that can probably fix it. So, not sure what that noise was. It appears it had yellow flames on it with purple pinstripe and the body color may have been black. talk about while I'm taking this apart. Uh, 
really excited about doing this. It's not very often I do something for the kids or anything like that. And something special like this anyways. So, it's a pretty cool deal. Don't think that was supposed to be part of the car. File that over there. Guess this one didn't have a washer on it. You guys uh, taking notes on how this comes apart for me so I can put it back together later? I hope so, because I'm not. Not sure how the steering wheel comes off, but I think vice grips are going to be necessary. shaft for the steering wheel has flat sides on it and the steering wheel is just wallered out so we should be able to fix that up pretty easy and uh, get that tightened back down so, that shouldn't be bad I'm going to save the wheels for later because I'm going to take them apart and clean them up and do all that. Try to tighten them and everything at the same time. So I guess I'm going to get some sandpaper out. Just start going over it lightly by hand and see how hard it's going to be to get this paint that they sprayed on there off of it. So I'll go grab some sandpaper. We're just going to start off with a little bit of 220 here. I'm sure we'll uh, have a lot of sand in to get this where it's decent to paint it. Mainly trying to get through the paint to this stick on pinstriping that's on here because I want to pull that pinstriping off. So I'm kind of focusing on the areas where the pinstriping is so I can try to get to it to get it off. Maybe I'll just keep sanding it like that and leave it with the uh, faded paint with flame showing through. Look, what do you think? Yeah, no. It looks cool, but not for my daughter. kind of uh, paint they sprayed on here but it's some hard thick stuff
think you guys have seen enough sanding for a little bit and uh, I might be able to do this without y'all supervision so I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this for a little bit and uh, show you progress in a few all right so I got sanded into the flame tape halfway decent so I want to take a razor blade and see if I can get underneath it and pull it up without gouging it too bad Looks like it's coming off, so that's nice. I didn't want to sand into this too far, because if I would have, then I would have made this pinstriping tape real thin, and it wouldn't have had any strength to be able to pull it off like this. So I just wanted to get to where I could find the edge of it and see it and then go through and try to peel it off like we're doing right now. And I may put flames back on this so if I do, you might ask why I'm taking all the time to take it off. Well, my reasoning behind that is I don't want the... If I put flames on it, I'm going to paint them on. I'm not going to tape them on. And I want the paint to all be smooth and look good just like you would on a regular car. So I didn't want to just tape off this tape that was already here and then spray over it and have it be sticking up like it was already so I'm not going to sand this thing like down to bare metal I'm just going to sand it smooth so it'll so I can get a decent paint job on it so if I just sand it smooth with the different color variations and stuff it had on it I'm pretty sure that I could repaint these same flames and put them back on. But I'm leaning more towards scallops because if this was a production car with uh, flames on it, then there was probably a lot of them out there. So, and I think the body style of it is kind of 40s ish. And I think scallops look a lot better on those style cars. So once I get it cleaned down and get my base coat put on it and can really stand back and look at it, I'll decide. I'll start drawing up some ideas and see what I want to do. But trying really hard to make this a two day project the rest of today and tomorrow. If it takes a week, it'll take a week, but I'd like to get it done and get back on some other projects, but I'm not cutting any corners with this at all. So, all right, so it appears this pinstriping tape's coming off. So I'm gonna keep going at it and uh, update you guys here in a few minutes. All right, well, that was a bit of a painstaking progress, but we got her done. Got all the pinstriping tape off. So there's a bad gouge where like all the paint was missing right there. So I went ahead and sanded it a little bit. Now that that's done, there's chipping paint and flakes and stuff all over this thing. So I'm gonna switch up to 80 grit, go over the whole thing try to get most of the white off, rough it up, and uh, 
Then I'll go back with some finer grip paper, maybe like some 180, 200, something like that. And uh, I think in order to get it as smooth as I want it to be, I'm gonna have to shoot a thick coat of high fill primer on there. No big deal. So we're having fun. There's an update. I'm gonna get back to sanding. All right, well, I spared you guys most of the sanding. I put a little bit in there just so you could see what I was doing. But um, I got this thing sanded all the way down to 180 and no 220 i got it sanded down to 220 and i got it all wiped down with prep saw got my custom wheel and tire covers installed i don't want overspray all over this table and i don't want to take a risk of any dust that's on it so i put a piece of clean cardboard down and i was just gonna sand this thing fairly smooth and shoot it but um it needs some primer so i'm gonna put a few good coats of primer on it build it up quite a bit and that way i can sand it out a little bit smooth it out some more so that's the next step time to throw some primer on it all right i'm just gonna start out with a tack coat or a dust coat or whatever you want to call it um, just to get something there to bond to and then I'll come back and put a heavier coat on and then we'll let that pack up and then I'll probably come back and put another coat on just to build it up so here we go All right, <clears throat> I may have uh, snuck a coat in there without turning the camera on, but I'm doing multiple coats. I want to build it up as much as I can without being too much. And then I'm gonna let it sit overnight and cure good. And then I'm gonna come back and sand it and try to get some of the scratches out some of the spots where you can kind of sort of still see the flames. They're not real prominent, but. I'm not by any means a paint and body guy. I'm not good at sanding at all. So. And I can't feel nothing. So I don't know when stuff's smooth. I just look at it and go, yep, looks pretty good. And then uh, that's what it is. So by getting a bunch of primer built up on here, then I can uh, then I can spray some guide coat on it and sand it, and I'll be able to tell right away if it's straight or not. Well, I know it's not going to be straight, but I mean enough to 
enough to hide the where the flames used to be and stuff. So that's the plan, anyways. All right. So next morning, I let that primer sit and dry all night, and uh, turned out pretty good. I thought I, I could still see a couple little marks where the flames were and stuff in it when I was spraying it. And I was thinking I was going to have to come in this morning and really block a lot of it out. But it kind of self-leveled, I guess, and uh, turned out pretty good. So, we got her all primered. And uh, doesn't look too bad. So, I think what I'm going to do is just take a Scotch-Brite pad, scuff it good, and then... Uh, once I get it scuffed up good, we can put a coat of paint on it. And then we're probably gonna have to let it sit for quite a while and dry because I don't wanna put tape on it right away to tape off the graphics we're gonna put on there. So I'm going to uh, scuff this down and we'll start shooting some paint. All right, I got a gray scotch Sprite hide, which is a fine material. I really need to be using red but I stopped to get some this morning, they didn't have any. So this will scuff it up good enough for the paint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub over it all real light, kind of smooth it out and scuff it so we can shoot some paint on it. And then we'll wipe it back down and spray it some more. that all scuffed up I'm gonna go back and uh, wipe it off with some pre-clean and then we'll start spraying the base coat on there all right I'm just going with a, a high gloss white for the base coat I'm gonna spray this the same way I sprayed the primer just get a dusting on there, let it tack up. Okay, got that on. We'll let it sit and tack for a few minutes till it starts to dry a little bit and then we'll go back and put a thicker coat on it. Okay, I put two heavy coats of white base on top of that dust coat that I filmed. Got good coverage, looking good, pretty shiny. So now that I did that, the next steps I have to take in this paint job, I have to tape stuff off. So I want to let this paint sit for quite a while and have some cure time so that when I stick the tape on it to tape stuff off to paint it, when I peel the tape back off, I don't take the paint back off with it. So I'm not worried about the prep. I got it. It's all scuffed and everything to where the paint should have a good bond so i'm not worried about any problems with that i just don't want the paint to still be too wet and tacky and not cured on there and then when i peel the tape off it takes the paint off with it so i'm gonna let that sit and cure uh why i do that i'm gonna move on to the next little project on this thing and uh I'm gonna make a little seat for it. Nothing fancy, really. I'm not an upholsterer or anything. I just wanna put a little something in here so my little girl doesn't have to sit on this metal 
pan here. So we're gonna take some measurements. We're gonna cut out a piece of wood. And then I have some foam cushion stuff that I bought here. And then I've got some material to put over the top of that that's gonna go along with the scheme of the car. I uh, was gonna try to sew some pleats in it or something like that, but I, uh, I'm not a sewing person. So I'm gonna see how it turns out, just wrapping it and see what it looks like. So we're gonna get started on that process. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here, looks like this is pretty much just a rectangle. So I'm gonna take some measurements. Looks like about 15 by six. So I'm going to take my measurements and I'm going to put them on a piece of uh, paper, cardboard, and cut that out and then I'm going to set it in there just to make sure it fits good. And then if that works out good then we'll transfer our stencil over onto a piece of wood and we'll cut that out and see how it goes. Alright, I got my piece of cardboard here. My measurements were 15. by six I'm going to cut this out and we will set it in there and make sure it's going to fit good. Alright, I not only made this template to see if the size was right, because obviously it's 15 by 6, those are easy measurements. But if you look, if I set that on there, it's not going to fit down in there. So the other reasoning for making the template was because I wanted to make sure I could take this and find a way to get it in there without having to bend it because obviously when I cut it out of a piece of wood I'm not going to be able to bend it to get it in there so that sits good on my seat like I want it to I cut it just a little bit short on each end so that by the time I put the foam on and wrap the cloth over it I don't have to wedge it in there it'll slide in easier so it looks like I can just take this and come straight down with it and then come out the side. So I'm going to be able to get it in with the without having to bend anything so I'll be able to get the wood in there. And then once I get the seat made, I'll drill a couple holes in the bottom of the seat here. And I'll run some short screws that won't go through the wood up through the bottom to hold the seat in place. So. Obviously, I'm still painting and stuff. I'm not going to permanently mount the seat, but we're going to go ahead and get it made so when the painting's done, it's already done, and we can just put it in there. All right, I got a piece of like three quarter inch plywood here. I'm just going to take my template, square it up good on there, then I'll mark it. Alright, I'm going to go take this outside and cut it, and it's raining, so I don't want to bring the camera out there. So, I'll go get this cut, and then we'll get back after it. Alright, I got my foam here. 
Not really sure what it is. My wife got it for me from the craft store. But it just says it's soft and supportive cushion foam. So. Just going to take a piece of it. Lay it out on here. Gonna kind of leave a little bit extra over the edges. And I'll mark it. I'm hoping I can cut this with these scissors because otherwise I don't know how to cut it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I bought some spray adhesive. I'm going to coat the wood side real good. sit and tack up for a few minutes. I'm just doing this so that this pad doesn't move once I wrap the material. And I'll do the same thing on here. Kind of let both of them sit for a little bit and tack up before I stick them together. We got our pad on our wood, stuck really nice, it's not coming off at all. So I'm going to lay out something clean here on the floor so we can do the fabric and uh, then we'll move on from there. Okay, I got this fabric, it's not seat fabric, it's not any kind of special anything, it's literally just a yard of material that we got from the craft store but it's the right color and it's going to give her a softer seat to sit on so just going to take this and set it down here and pull this over the edge Take my stapler.
and then I gotta figure out how to do these corners because I really honestly don't know. So I'm not going to say that looks good, but don't look too bad. Okay, the camera battery died, but I finished stapling this all down. And then I took a small ball peen hammer and tapped all the staples as flat as I could get them. And then I went ahead and stuck some Gorilla Tape on there. Kind of to help hold it, but mainly just to keep the material from fraying. But it's not perfect by any means, but for somebody that has absolutely no skill at doing fabric stuff I think it turned out all right I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed but let's see if we can get it in here without getting it all dirty and there it is obviously I'm not done painting yet so I'm not gonna leave it in there I'll pull it back out but it's kind of cool i like it so one more thing we can check off the list the seat's done next thing i'm going to do is take this windshield frame thing whatever it is and this little hood ornament i'm going to sand them down clean them up and then i'm going to paint them too and uh i'll spare you guys the sanding process but when i get them to where I'm going to paint them, I'll probably do a little clip to show you what color they're going to be. So, hang out and we'll keep going. Okay, I got the little windshield all sanded down, scuffed up. I got the hood ornament all sanded down and scuffed up. I got some aluminum color. I wanted to get silver, but aluminum was the closest I could find. So, I'm going to go ahead and paint the hood ornament and the windshield frame i'm going to spray the back side of the windshield frame and let it sit till it tacks up and then i'll flip it over and put a good paint job on the outside because i want to make sure that i paint the whole thing i don't want to just do the outside and leave the inside looking rough so i don't know if i like this color hopefully it dries a little lighter looks too much like spray paint chrome Oh well, what can I do? Alright. I think I got it all. Like I said, I'm going to let that windshield frame sit there and tack up and then I'll flip it over and spray the side that you're gonna see most of the time and uh, then we'll be finished up with that part all right so we're making a little bit of progress on this little car uh, it's turning out the way I want it to and I'm happy about it but we got the hood ornament and the windshield frame all painted and done and I tried yesterday afternoon to start taping off some stuff on the body to uh, paint some details on there 
And I did a little test spot of tape. I got this fine line tape. I just did a little test spot right there to see if it was good. And pulled the tape back off and the paint wasn't cured yet and it came with it. So I sanded that back out and let the thing sit overnight. It's been taking forever. It's really humid and rainy here. It has been all week. So it's slowing the process down. But I did a little test spot of the tape over on this side of the bumper just now and everything looks good. The paint didn't come off. The paint feels pretty hard. It doesn't feel tacky at all. So I'm going to go ahead and try to tape off this rear bumper and the front bumper and uh, we'll get some paint on it and uh, I might go ahead and start taping off the flames but I'm not probably going to spray those until after the bumpers are dry. But we're going to uh, tape some stuff off and get some more paint on this thing. So here we go. All right. I think our paint's dry enough to put tape on it. If it's not, then I guess we're going to start over this whole process. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and tape off this rear bumper. Just using this uh, quarter inch fine line tape. I wish I had something a little thinner, but I don't. This is what I had, and the little parts store here doesn't have any, so. We'll make it work. I'm gonna tape off this bumper. We're gonna spray it the same color as the windshield surround and uh, Hood ornament, we're going to do the same thing with the front bumper. Sorry guys, I'm focusing on what I'm doing. I'm probably not going to talk a whole lot while I do this. I might just go ahead and time lapse it for you while I tape it up. Alright, I'm trying not to put any more tape on it than I have to. So I put that tape on there really light. I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and cover the edge. I'm using the same aluminum color that I used on the uh, windshield surround and the hood ornament. Painting my hand, you know, all the good stuff. Probably getting over spray all over everything. Oh, not too bad. Stuff's acting really weird. Let's see if we still got paint on this thing.
Well, looks like we get to redo it. So, fun stuff. So, see if I can touch it up, but I doubt I'm going to be able to. So, we'll probably just end up sanding her down and repainting her. So, here we go. All right, so you guys saw the catastrophe. I don't know what caused it. I don't know if the paint just wasn't cured. I don't know if maybe I didn't get that area prepped good because it took the paint and the primer off only where I stuck the tape on. So uh, I was able to touch it up. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible either. From about two feet away, you never even notice where it messed up. See, everything looks white. Everything looks white. Might try to put some more paint on that bumper with a brush or something, but other than that, I'm not touching it. But I got irritated and I don't like the film when I'm irritated. So I went ahead and taped off the front without the fine line tape. I just used the 3M green uh, easy peel tape or whatever it's called. And I taped off the front and painted the front bumper and the grill and it didn't take any white paint off and it turned out pretty good so i'm gonna i've got some pinstriping markers that i was going to use to do the headlights and stuff i can go ahead and clean that edge up a little bit when i do that which it really doesn't look that bad now but I'm a perfectionist and I overdo everything, so. But we managed to save the back. Um, it turned out pretty good after all. And the front turned out great. So I'm gonna let that sit and dry for a while. And then I guess I'm just gonna use the green painter's tape and tape off the flames i really hate to do that because it's hard to maneuver it into shapes i might just be able to lay it on there and then cut the shapes out carefully so i don't cut into the paint I haven't quite figured it out yet but now that i painted the bumper i gotta let it dry so i can stick tape to it and not worry about peeling it off so uh yeah i guess we'll just see what happens but we're gonna let this sit and dry some more and uh considering it just started pouring again it may be tomorrow before i can do anything to this thing again so i guess we'll wait and see what happens all right so with the issues i've been having with the tape on the paint i've decided that i'm gonna try to hand paint the flames uh, i'm not very sure handed and i'm not sure how it's going to turn out but we're gonna try and i'm gonna put forth my best effort to do it so see how it goes All right, so it's going, I guess is the best I can say. Um, it's gonna take me a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
turn the camera off and I'll do a little bit and I'll bring you back and show you how it's looking and uh, we'll keep on going until it's done. Alright, before I show you guys the car again I just want to talk about something I was thinking about for a minute and uh, I was getting pretty uh, discouraged. I guess you would say about this whole project like I had this vision in my mind of what I wanted to do for my daughter and have her have the this super cool pedal car and I started out on it and like I said at the beginning I'm not a paint and body guy and I'm definitely not an artist like that kind of artist and I had a vision in my mind and I was like, man, this is what I'm going to do. This thing's going to be the best pedal car ever. It's going to be awesome, you know. And it still is. But I ran into the little problem that you saw earlier with the tape. And my intentions were to tape off the flames, spray them with spray paint, peel the tape off, pinstripe them with a paint marker, put clear on it. Bing, bang, boom, done. Well, after the little incident with the tape on the back, I didn't want to put tape on the rest of the car just in case. Like the paint's in good shape, it's holding up good now. I just want to leave it. I don't want to take a chance at peeling any more paint off. So I came up with the idea, hey, I'll go get some brushes and some, you know, brushable paint and we'll just hand paint the flames on there and that's what i did i went and got paint went and got brushes and i started painting and i was looking at it and i have ocd i'm a perfectionist when it comes to stuff i'm doing and i was looking at it and i was like man this looks terrible i'm just gonna scrap this whole project like i'm embarrassed to show this you know i'm gonna throw this whole youtube video away i'm not even gonna put it up and the more I thought about it, and as I'm saying all this crap, I didn't quit. I just kept painting. But so as I thought about it, as I'm going along painting it, I'm like, this is something that I'm doing for my daughter, for her birthday. I'm not going to the store and buying her some cheap made crap. I'm not paying someone else to do something for her, which is basically the same as buying it. I'm doing something for her from my heart because I love her. I want to give her this car. So does it really matter what it looks like? I mean, in my mind, yes, it needs to be perfect. But in reality, it look, I'm looking at it right now. It looks decent and it will look a little bit better. But I know that I gave it my best trying to make it look the way I wanted it to and hopefully when she's old enough to understand she'll cherish the fact that i made it for her and keep it as a keepsake or you know she'll turn five and start to hate me like kids do nowadays and i'll repaint it again and keep it for myself but the principle of the matter is what i'm getting at is i thought about it and i'm doing something for her it, it doesn't matter if it's perfect it doesn't have to be you know show quality it's not for anybody else, it's for her from me. So, I'm gonna finish this video. I'm gonna show you guys, you know, what it looks like because you guys are like friends, you know? I show you when I make mistakes, I show you when I'm stupid and don't think right and everything else. And you guys are the reason I get to keep doing this, so. Sorry for the rant, but I just wanted to kind of explain to you guys where I was at mentally because it was really getting to me, but it's got pink flames on it. The flames are a little fat. Some of them aren't very straight. The hood looks halfway decent, but they don't match side to side. But as I'm painting it, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, and I'm giggling because you guys ever seen any of those old like black and white car movies, the old hot rider movies? I watch them all the time, I love them. But that's what's in those movies. Like, you know, guys got out there with paintbrushes and rollers and 
put a flame job on their car and that's what it looks like it looks like a 50s and 60s hot rod flame job which is kind of cool to me because and there's really no method to flames like flames don't there's not a pattern for flames they're just flames so you can't really say oh that's too fat or that's too skinny or that doesn't look right because i've seen every kind of flame there is and i'm not trying to justify what i did to you guys i'm just thinking it's a hot rod with flames on it and it's growing on me like i kind of like it i'm still gonna clean up the grill i'm gonna paint the headlight rings and the headlights i got paint markers to do that we still got our shiny stuff over here to put on it and i've got to put a couple more coats of paint on the pink and then i'm going to take a silver paint marker and kind of pinstripe around the outside of the flames which i think will give them a little bit more definition maybe i can draw a little straighter with that because it's more like a pen but uh yeah so it's i'm happy again like like i said i was kind of getting down in the dumps about it I was gonna scrap the car, throw the YouTube video away, but I'm back, we're having fun. We're making a car for my daughter and here it is. So I'm gonna let this paint dry for a little bit. I'm gonna go and uh, get ready to put another coat of paint on it. We'll put another coat of paint on it. And once I get the flames all painted, I'll bring you guys back and show you. So hold tight. All right, sorry about the noise in the background. The neighbors are mowing the yard. There's not a whole lot I can do about it, but I got in the zone and was working on this car and made quite a bit of progress. So I figure before I go any further, I'll stop and give you guys an update, but I'm excited about it now. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out. It looks all right. So uh, here we go. Couple coats of pink on there for the flames then I outlined the flames with silver and then I painted the headlights around and detailed up the headlights a little bit made the grill look more like a grill got tail lights on it so turning out pretty cool i like it um all i got left to do is put a couple coats of clear on it and uh i'm just going to shoot those on and then after that's done i can reassemble it and uh see what i'm going to do about the wheels i'm not really sure what i want to do about them yet if i could clean up those chrome caps that are kind of rusty i prefer to do that and just leave the wheels black with the chrome caps on them so I'm gonna try that first, if that doesn't work, I'll pull the wheels all the way off and we'll paint them or something. But uh, yeah, um, I think it's pretty cool. Hope my daughter's gonna like it, but uh, let me get some clear coat on it and we'll catch back up. All right, so I figured I'd leave you guys with a little suspense and uh, have you sitting there wondering what I'm doing and what's going on. So I went ahead and finished up her little car and i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out and i really hope she likes it so you guys ready to see it sorry can't show you till june 4th gotta wait for her birthday no i'm just kidding here it is made a little license plate for the back i'm gonna make a sticker that has her name on it or maybe a little turtle sticker because that's her nickname we call her turtle but uh i painted the wheels the hubcaps, they're the same color as the flames, but they're not dry yet. They darken up a little when they dry. Got our seat pad all installed. Painted our steering wheel, got it installed. I just got to make a little cover for this nut here. But everything is done. You know, got the hood ornament polished up and got it back on. Got our headlights, our grill. The flames really popped with the clear coat, which is pretty cool. So I'm probably going to have to spray a little clear on those hubcaps just to make them match the flames better. 
but I think it's pretty darn cool and I hope my daughter does too so this was a really trying project for me I mean it had a lot of meaning to me probably one of the most meaningful projects I've ever done and uh it was kicking my butt like I was having trouble with the paint things weren't going right I ended up hand painting the flames because I was afraid to put tape on it there's just a lot to it I almost scrapped the whole project and didn't even do it but I'm not a quitter so I figured it out I got it done and at the end of the day I'm pretty happy with the outcome of it so I think it's pretty cool so if you guys follow or if you guys check my little community post that I put up every once in a while you'll know that we hit 2,000 subscribers this week which is awesome I want to thank all you guys because you're the reason that we did it so uh, please keep watching comment like share and uh, if you just found the channel and you're not subscribed yet please do but Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Something a little different, a little project for my daughter. And uh, at the end of the day, now that it's all over, it was a lot of fun and I'm really happy with it. But y'all have a good one and we'll see you next time.